Welcome to our daily walk through this psalm, and today we are in Psalm 114, another one of the Hallel songs, songs of praise that Israel would sing during the time of Passover. And a great psalm that it is, depicting, of course, their deliverance from Egypt. And we read when Israel, verse 1, went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of a strange language. Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. Of course, Judah, the tribe of Judah, the leading tribe being uh, the place of Israel's sanctuary. And certainly that's what it is for us today, isn't it? The tribe of Judah and who came from the tribe of Judah, none other then Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Messiah, the King, Jesus Christ, he has and is our sanctuary. And that's a wonderful thing to recognize. And, 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 and of course, he's also Israel's dominion. Uh, to the degree that we allow the Lord to dominate our lives is to the degree we get to experience the peace of his sanctuary. And that's always a struggle, isn't it? There's times when we want to be the dominating factor. We want to call the shots. We want to make the decisions. And of course, God, in his sovereignty, allows us to have our sovereignty where we do make decisions. We certainly have free choice. But the people that find the greatest peace, the greatest joy, the greatest comfort are those that have learned to allow the Lord to make their decisions. And certainly we consult the Lord at every uh, turn, every event. That's 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 our drive. And, and, and of course, we unfortunately, we're so prone to get ourselves in the way often. And there's so many things coming at us 100 miles an hour from every direction. And so it's easy to get caught, caught off guard. But I would encourage you, and, and of course I encourage myself as well, to always fall back upon the Lord, regarding Him as our place of sanctuary, and certainly with that comes that of dominion. Lord, dominate my life by the power of your Spirit, by the work of your Spirit, be be that which dominates me in every decision and every everything. Um, he certainly orders the steps of a righteous man. So he is going to do it regardless. However, where we experience the greatest peace and joy is when we are a part of that, uh, you know, allowing him to dominate and, and lead and to just rest in that, not being so caught up in so many decisions and and in every decision we have, we can just simply lay before the Lord, Lord, I don't know what to do here. And and, and quite frankly, that's that's often the case, isn't it? I don't know what to do. Lord, you show me. So how to have peace in a time in a world of trouble. Notice the first verse, going back to the first verse, Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from the people of a strange language. And, and that is us today. We're a people... Uh, that dwells in the midst of a people of a strange language. The world speaks a different language than those that know God, than those that are born again of the Spirit. We, we do. We're, 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 we live in this world, but we're really not of this world. This is not our home. And, that, and really, we can find great peace in that as well. We, we learn to hold on things a whole lot uh, less tight. In fact, hold on to everything with an open hand, knowing that that we're just passing through this place. I think that was what a beautiful thing about Father Abraham, who, by the way, was, had such an amazing close relationship with the Lord. He was the man of faith, uh, the father of faith, and, and that's because he, he, he learned to just trust the Lord in everything. And we saw he grew in that as time went on to the point where he finally... Uh, you know, when, when the Lord told him to take his son, his only son Isaac, up into Mount uh, Moriah and sacrifice him, he was willing to do that, trusting the Lord, knowing that, well, if the Lord, if I, if I do what the Lord says and he takes 
my son's life, he's also able to bring it back again. He's also, he believed in even the resurrection, even at that time. And so entrusting our lives into the Lord's hand, knowing that we're, we're only passing through this place, allowing the Lord to have dominion in and, in and over our lives, and in finding our sweet, precious sanctuary in him. That's, that's what it's all about. And, and then he goes on to say in the verses 3 through 8, literally describing that deliverance from Egypt and the power and the majesty of the Lord. It's like, you know, look who is in dominion. Look who is in control. And, and you know, the, the, notice uh, Judah was a sanctuary, verse 2 again, and Israel's dominion. And the sea saw it, <laughs> the oceans as large as they are, they saw it and fled, and Jordan was driven back. And of course, depicting the, the Red Sea, thousands of tons of uh, metric tons of water being separated by the, simply by, by Moses trusting, lifting up his rod as God had told him to do, and the waters parted, letting you know, a million and a half, two million people, Israelites, through there on dry ground and then closing it up again and destroying the entire army of Pharaoh, Pharaoh included, destroyed in that in that whole thing. Same thing with when they got to the Jordan River. Moses lifted up his, his, his staff and again, the, the Jordan River parted. Um, so, you know, God showing his dominion and his power in and for and through Israel, parted the sea, drove back the River Jordan, and then notice verse 4 says the mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like lambs. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled, you Jordan, that you were driven back? You mountains that you skipped like rams and you hills like the lambs. And of course, depicting that of being at Mount Sinai after they had gone to, uh, in, into that area of Sinai and camped there. And Moses uh, was in contact with the Lord and was speaking to the Lord. And, and we see that in, in Exodus chapter 19. And he brought the forth the people out of the, the camp to meet with God. And we, we read in verse 18, Psalm, Exodus 19, that the Mount Sinai was altogether smoke uh, because the Lord had descended upon it with fire and the smoke thereof ex ascended as a smoke of a furnace and the mountain quaked greatly. Can you imagine that? So quaked the the uh, the mountain and, the, and of course the earth around it that the people says, Moses, you talk to the Lord. We're okay with just hearing whatever you say. You know, in, in other words, it freaked him out so much. Again, who are we speaking of that we lay our lives in the hands of as a sanctuary and as the dominator of our lives is nothing no no less than the lord god almighty the king of the universe and that's the whole point we can trust him his word is true his power his majesty is evident in creation his power and majesty is evident through all the people of israel and throughout the entire bible and such wonderful stories we get to read about it how god impacted just people with with like passions as us just common people got impacted because he so wants to be involved and infused in our lives he wants that for you he wants that for me and and so how to have peace in the midst of trouble is learn to hold on loosely to this world and yet reach out and hold on tightly to jesus christ who is the is god the son where we have favor. Then in verse 7 and 8, it says, Tremble you, earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned the rock into a standing water and the flint into the mountain of waters. And again, another picture. The people were grumbling and complaining because here they were out in, the, in this desert land with no water to drink. And, and God says, Moses, just go strike the rock. There they, they were at the area of Meribah. Of course, the word Meribah got the name because of the, the grumbling. It was a, it was a place of, of Meribah bitterness, people grumbling. And Moses did simply that in Exodus chapter 17. He stood before the rock, he struck it, 
gave the people water. And verse 7 of Exodus 17 says, And he called the name of the place Massa or Meribah because the children, or the chiding of the children of Israel, because they tempted the Lord, saying, notice this, they said this, this is why, you know, this is why it was called Meribah or bitterness. The Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Really? <laughs> you just parted the Red Sea? Are you serious? He just delivered you from a land where you didn't speak the language for 400 years where you're in bondage there and you say, is he with us or not? And then, of course, struck the rock, gave them their provision of water, just as he does for us each and every day. Jesus said, if you're thirsty, come unto me and drink, for I will give unto you a well of living water, and out of you shall come forth torrents of living water. We need to trust in the Lord. We need to drink of the, of the well of Jesus Christ each and every day. We need to hold on to things loosely in, in this world around us because we're only passing through. This is not home. Home is coming soon, but we're not there yet. And we need to remember that Jesus Christ is our sanctuary, our place of peace and rest. And he's also the one that dominates over us. And we will experience that joy of his domination more as we let go of the reins of our control and let him drive the truck. God bless you as you worship him today. In Jesus' name, amen.